Good day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add forces together. Okay, so let's consider this with a simple example. Let's say that we have a beam which is embedded in this wall just here. All right, so this is our beam. And let's say that we've got two forces acting on the end point of our beam just here. All right, let's say that we've got one force which is acting purely up on this point. Let's call this force F1. Right, and let's say it's quite a simple number. Let's say it's just 100 newtons acting up on this point right here. And let's say that we've got another force which is being, which is pulling this point out in this direction. And let's say it's going to be, let's say it'll be um, 200 newtons like this. And let's clarify its direction by saying it's at 20 degrees from the horizontal. So I'll call this force F2 just here. Okay, now how do we add these forces together to find what's called our resultant force vector? Well, as it turns out, there's two methods we can apply. One is the graphical method, and I'll go through that first. Graphical method. Okay, now with the graphical method to find your resultant force vector, what you do is you sum these forces up by putting them on top of each other head to tail. So, so let me show you what I mean. You start off with F1 from this point. You start off with F1 and you draw it roughly to scale. So this is 100 newtons. So, you, so the length of this thing should be 100 units, right? And then what you do is you add this vector on top of it. So you start here and then you draw 200 units long vector just along here, right? At the same angle, right? And then your resultant force vector you can show graphically, which I'll draw in pink, is going to be this vector just here. This will be your resultant force vector R. So to make things clear, this is our first force F1 with our second force right here. So to make this clear, we can find it graphically by just pl plotting these vectors on top of each other and then drawing a line to wherever they end up, right? And this is our resultant force vector. Right? And so just to, just to give you a sense of the power of the graphical method, right, you could actually get your ruler and protractor out and physically measure you know, what your resultant force vector would be. Right? There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Unfortunately, it's a little bit impractical to do that every time. So there's another method you can use, and this is the analytical method. Analytical method. And this is my personal favorite. What we do here is we deconstruct our force vectors into horizontal and vertical co components, right? And the, and the way we do that is we do it by first defining an axis. So I'm going to define horizontal as positive, and I'm going to, sorry, to the right is positive, and vertical is positive like this, okay? Now, because of, because of this way I've defined positive, that means that we can deconstruct F1 in terms of X and Y coordinates now. We know that F1 can now be written as 0i, so that's the amount of this force in the i direction, which is 0, plus 100j, right? This force is entirely in the vertical, so it's just 100j right here. And we can also write this as 0, 100, like this. Don't forget to write newtons on the end, because of course this thing's in newtons, okay? Now F2 can also be written as, F2 can be deconstructed by using trigonometry. We know that the horizontal component of this is going to be 200 cosine 20. So this is going to be 200 cosine 20 i plus this component, which is going to be 200 sine 20. 200 sine 20 j, right? And if you were to plug that into your calculator, the 200 cosine 20 will evaluate out into 187.94 newtons and the vertical component would be 68.4 newtons, like that, okay? Now, now we can talk about the resultant force vector. The resultant force vector, R, is going to be the vector sum of F1 plus F2, like this, right? And it's actually really easy to evaluate. What we do is we sum the elements. So, so we sum the i's, which is going to be 0 plus 187.94, which is easy. That's 187.94, like this. And then we sum the j's. So it's going to be 100 plus 68.4, which is 168.4, like this. And this right here, this right here is our resultant force vector. This is what happens when we sum our vectors together, like this. This is our answer, right? We found it.
right? But to give you a little bit of intuition, let's, let's draw our resultant force vector again like this, right? This is our resultant force vector like this. This shows that the horizontal component is 187.94 newtons to the right and 168.4 newtons upwards. That's what we've just shown, okay? So newtons in the j direction and newtons in the i direction like this, okay? Now, before I end this video, I also want to talk about the magnitude of our resultant force vector. What's the length of this arrow, so to speak? Right? Well, we can find that using Pythag Pythagoras. The magnitude of our resultant force vector is going to be equal to the square root of 187.94 squared plus 168.4 squared. Right? And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get 252.35 newtons. So that's the length of this arrow, so to speak. Okay? That's, that's the amount of force in this direction. Okay? And to really hammer this point home, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this free body diagram again, like this, showing only these external forces being replaced by our resultant force. And it would look like this, like that. That would be our resultant force vector, like this. And these two diagrams will behave identically. Okay? Anyway, I hope that made sense, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.